I'm glad that you found me because I don't want you spending and paying thousands and thousands of dollars. There's a lot of sharks out there. There's a lot of companies that are charging a lot of money to register you. I want you to do this yourself on your own. Hey there, Derek, GovKidMethod.com. Today, I'm creating an update on how to register your small business or register your government contracting business in the new SAM.gov system. If you're ready to move forward from this point to actually register your business and start trying to do business with the US federal government and ultimately win government contracts. And I'm creating this as an update because hopefully you know by now, but the new SAM.gov system has gone into place, which means the old beta.sam.gov system and the old sam.gov system, two different websites, they have now merged. So things are different the way that we access things. So if you're trying to watch one of my previous older videos on how to register your business, well, the look and feel, the user interface of the websites have changed, different buttons, different places to get started to access it. All those have changed. The actual process itself to register in sam.gov has not changed, just like a previous video that I just did the other day on how to add and edit and change your NAICS codes. That process also hasn't changed, but how you access it is changing because of these change in websites. So I hope that makes sense. And that's why I'm doing the update to this video. So today I'm going to break this down for you. We're actually doing a working video today. I'm going to break it down into some quick, simple steps, layman's terms. And by the end of this video, you should know everything that you really need to know to register your business in Sam.gov on your own. It's 2021, so if you're watching this video you know, now as I'm posting it or at any point in the future, this is what you're gonna need to do to register your business. And this is the process that you have to go through to actually become eligible to receive a federal government contracting award. Without it, without having that cage code, for example, you can't win a contract. So I really want you to pay attention to this video. I'm glad that you were searching this up. I'm glad that you found me because I don't want you spending and paying thousands and thousands of dollars. There's a lot of sharks out there. There's a lot of companies that are charging a lot of money to register you. I want you to do this yourself on your own. SAM.gov, you know, GSA, the, the Federal Service Desk, everybody wants you to learn to do this on your own. So that is my hope for this video in sharing the information. I'm simply just sharing and walking you through the steps that they give you, maybe breaking it down a little bit so it makes more sense to you. Um, I know that I always appreciate that when I'm trying to learn something that's complicated or confusing. This way, you, again, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. You can do this yourself. You can register the business yourself, and then you can become eligible to win government contracts. And then once you are registered, then you can take the next steps to market your business, develop your capability statement, and start responding to bids and, and networking with the different, you know, Ozdaboos, targeting contracting officers, responding to sources sought, all this good stuff that we talk about here on the channel and that I also um, do in my one-on-one -on -one coaching or in my ultimate government contracting training program, GovCon Gold Rush. I show you exactly you know, what you need to do and more importantly, how you need to do it. So once you get registered, you can check all that out. And if you have any interested in that, make sure you check out my website, govkidmethod.com, and I can help you out a whole lot there. But let's go ahead and get started in how to actually register your business in the SAM.gov system in the new system. Okay guys, so I'm going to give you a, a kind of a clean rundown. So you're gonna to go to sam.gov and then you're gonna go over to register entity. You're gonna click get started. They're gonna give you four kind of steps here. This is uh, new the way they have it laid out, but it's not really new in the process. So don't worry too much about it. Number one, you have to request a DUNS number. This is something that we're still having to do, I think until next year, but we'll see. Um, this takes about 10 minutes, uh, as they say here, to actually get this is super quick and easy step for you. And it'll take one to two business days um, when using the web form, it's saying to get your, your DUNS number. Other times it can take a, a lot, you know, shorter amount of time. So just to give you a quick glance at the website, you're going to dnb.com. Uh, more importantly, they've even, you know, prompted you to the actual page, you know, get a DUNS number, request a DUNS number. So, you know, you're gonna go through and answer a few of these type of questions and um, you're gonna enter your business name and your address and you're going to you know, submit. It may ask you a question uh, after this or a different question before this, depending on the information you put in, but it really is that simple. It's just kind of a, a few buttons, a few steps, and you'll get an email notification um, and you'll get your DUNS number. So that's literally step one. It, it couldn't really be simpler than that. So the next step they tell you here is to prepare your data. 
They're saying once you have your DUNS number, so again, do that step first and then come here. They're kind of giving you the information ahead of time of what you need to, you know, have on hand once you're register, you know, once you're ready to register. It's almost like getting ready for tax season, right? Like you got to get all your receipts and all your, you know, W-2s or, or whatever information you have. You get it ready to take to the tax person. Well, that's what we're doing in step two. We're getting our information ready to register the business. So one thing you need to have is your DUNS number. You need to have your TIN, your taxpayer ID number. Um, they're saying if you already have a cage code, you can bring that. But I'm just letting you know as a side note, a lot of people are like, where do I get my cage code? You will be you will be given a chance to answer the question in the actual SAM registration part of this where it'll ask you, do you have a cage code? You will be able to say no. If you say no or when you say no, they'll be like, okay, we're going to assign you one as part of this registration process. So nothing to worry about there. I don't really know many people who have gone through this and already had a cage code. Um, and if you're in a, you know, a, a NATO uh, area, um, you'll be getting an end cage code instead of a cage code. You know, to be honest, I don't really focus with businesses outside of the United States. I'm really not your guy for that. Um, I really focus on, you know, small businesses within the United States. I am not an expert at doing business outside of the United States with the government, but I do know you would need to get an end cage code and then you could contact the federal service desk, which they usually have their uh, point of contact information, um, help down here, customer service. And you could ask them questions like that. Uh, they also have this live chat, web form, and call. Um, Federal Service Desk, here it is. Uh, if you have other questions that, you know, you get stuck or, you know, you are within a NATO territory. Um, again, that's not me. You're also next going to need your financial banking information, you know, for electronic funds transfer, which uh, may or may not be something you use, but you do put in your bank information. Um, to register an entity, uh, you need to complete the following documentation. Reps and certs points of contact. Okay, that's not something you do right now. It's they're making it sound like it's something you need to do. Um, you're going to be answering those questions again inside your SAM.gov registration. So just know that. And then to register an entity, you need to prepare and submit all documentation above as well as the following documentation. So again, you're going to be answering questions around your assertions. You know, that's where you're going to get into your NAICS codes, for example, um, EDI information, you're going to need answers to that. Most of us don't even know what that is. You'll see the type of questions I say um, once you get to them and you answer them to your best of your ability. Um, answers to FAR, again, SBA supplemental page, uh, FAR and DFAR questionnaire. These are all just the type of questions that they're going to be asking you. I think they take for granted that we, we know what all this is. Nobody's ever seen any of this stuff before. And i am you know, been through the process, you know, multiple times myself and I've you know, I know a lot of small business owners that have gone through it and I helped a few. So um, just kind of all that to let you know in this step, this is the stuff that you're gonna, you know, start to familiarize yourself with, but there's really not too much to do. Just kind of gather this information as you can and you should be good to go. So in the next step, get a login.gov account. This is literally something that you can do. So go to login.gov, click accept. I didn't want that to open to in another screen, um, but you can go create account here you need to create a login.gov account first before you can access anything. So you can see, create your account, enter your email address, you know, pick your language uh, preference. It's probably gonna ask you for a phone number um, and then you click submit. It's it's one of those things that's it's super easy. It's not a long drawn out process. So that's gonna how you're, you're gonna get your login.gov account. Um, let's see what else it says about it. It says login.gov is required to register your entity in SAM. That's what I'm talking about. You can set up your login.gov account in just a few minutes. That was kind of what I was just showing you. And again, they may ask you a, a page or two of questions after that, but it's going to be very short and it's going to be very easy. Once you complete the login.gov authentication, they're going to send you a code on your phone, six digits. You got to punch that in two step authentication factor process. They use that every time you log into SAM.gov now, um, then you can return to SAM.gov to begin the registration process. Okay. So in this step, you want to get that login.gov account. See guys, this is this is really not that bad, right? It's not really worth paying so many thousands of thousands of dollars. So next, um, when you are ready to start the process, select the register entity link and begin to submit your, your data. You can save your registration at any point, so you can save it as long as you verify um, your DUNS number, your legal business name, and your physical address. If the registration is complete, uh, if the registration is incomplete, it will be deleted after 
90 days. And lastly here, guys, uh, you may need an authorized letter. This depends on what state you live in, but they're telling you, you will receive a request for this letter if it is required in your case. So again, don't sweat it. You just go through and answer these questions. Um, I'm gonna show you where to go next. Uh, and then you know, you'll know you get an email saying, hey, we need a letter from you um, if, if you are required to have one. And then you will receive uh, an email if you were required to send them this letter that they're talking about, a notarized letter. Um, they'll give you the details on that. It's super easy, just a one page letter, but uh, not everybody's going to need to do that. So they don't make everybody do that. So this is the four steps. And they're saying, you know, allow up to 10 days after you submit your registration for to become active in SAM. You know, it usually takes a couple weeks for this to come through. You will get an email with your new cage code in it there, but they also have this new SAM tracker status thing where you could sign in and check the status. That's new, it sounds pretty cool, I haven't used it, but hopefully you can be able to see, you know, how things are coming along with your uh, profile registration here. Okay guys, so I'm trying to speed through this as quickly as possible while being as thorough as possible so you can get the most information as quickly as possible. So I did want to show you that page and where you would actually go to register once you're ready. We just went through those four steps, it was really pretty painless. So now you're ready to actually do it. Now what do you do? So you log into your login.gov, into your SAM.gov account, and it's going to um, give you an option to come up here to your workspace. When you go to your workspace, that will take you to this page that says workspace. And at the top, it will say entity management, and it will allow you this option to register an entity. So I want you to click on that. Once you click on that, now, you know, if you've done this before, uh, maybe you've done this with another business or something like that. This is the page we're all familiar with. Now we can all breathe a, a sigh of relief. Now we're back to the old Sam. I told you, I promised you, the way you go about it has not changed. This is all normal. It's just how you access it has changed. So if you come down here, start registration. I'm not lying to you. This is how you do it. Click start registration, and they're going to kind of go through the same information with you again before you start. Make sure you have your DUNS number. You know, you've got to have a business. You got to have a, a, a TIN number for it already. Your business already has to be registered, you know, with your state and, you know, an LLC or an S Corp or whatever it is you're doing. Um, and with the IRS, you know, that's how you get the TIN number. You get the TIN number by going to irs.gov. Um, so you, you have all that figured out ahead of time. You bring your bank shrouding information, right? And when you're all ready to go, you could click continue. I mean, let's see what happens. So here's what the questions are going to start to look like okay what type of entity are you registering i'm not going through all of these questions with you here's a table of contents this is this is what i can show you this is what you can expect there's going to be pages for every single one of these bullets okay so you're probably looking at about one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen i mean you're probably dealing with you know, 20 to 30 pages, okay? It's gonna take you about an hour if you have this information. You may have a few questions where you scratch your head and you're like, what does that even mean? I recommend you go to Google, kind of copy and paste some of the keywords in that question or the question itself. Usually Google's pretty good at kind of giving you further explanation of what that means. And also, uh, they may be referencing what's called a FAR clause. That's the Federal Acquisition Regulation, F-A-R. You are going to see that. You can literally look up that clause in Google. You can copy and paste that, and it will pull up what that FAR clause means. So if they're asking you a question about a certain FAR clause, and you're like, I don't know what that is. None of us know what that is. That's crazy that they expect. They should have a little eye icon over that where you you know scroll over it, and it pulls it up and says, you know, this is what this means. I mean, that, that would be awesome. Maybe they're adding that to the new SAM system. I'm not sure. But this is just a snapshot. This is what the user interface is going to look like. All these questions are gonna be like this, where you, you click on a button. Um, there's gonna be an opportunity for you to you know, type in your bank information, so you'll do a little bit of typing. And then also, um, you'll have a option under the core data, under assertions, which they're not showing me yet, but it's there, I promise you. Um, that's where you're gonna select your next codes. So you won't miss it, it'll be a big square box with tables. It'll be next codes, product and service codes, you'll be able to type those in and you'll be able to add, delete. You know, if this is brand new, you won't be deleting anything, but it'll pull it up. Once you type in the number, you can just kind of click add. Again, I just did a previous video on this the other day on how to add, edit, change next codes. Um, I will tee that up at the end of this video as one of the uh, watch next videos. 
So if you want to watch that for the next code, that will also help you out for the new SAM system. So guys, that's all that I wanted to cover. This is kind of the quick and dirty of it. Hopefully for most of you, this is all that you need. Again, you want to do this on your own. You don't want to pay a company thousands and thousands of dollars to do this because they're going to be doing the same steps that I just walked you through. Now, lastly, I did promise a bit of a free resource to help you out with this. So there is something called the PTAC, which is the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And the good news for you is that these centers are physical locations and they're supposed to be one in every county of the country. Now I'm gonna pull up the, the website link where you can go here on the screen. Um, it's usptac.org, something like that. Um, I'll pull up the link here, you'll be able to see it. And there's actually somebody that can help you with this in person or if you, you, know, you wanna call them. Um, and there's gonna be an interactive map where you can find the location. Call that PTAC if you need help with this so you don't feel um, you know, kind of safe and, and at peace of mind doing this yourself. You're afraid you're gonna mess something up, although I don't think you're going to. If you want more of that peace of mind, again, don't pay somebody thousands of dollars to do this. I'm trying to save you money here. Instead, go to your, your local free resource. This is what their job really is. It's one of the primary things is helping folks to get registered. They even help you with set-asides if you're needing that type of help. Um, you can contact them and they will probably wanna meet with you in person. Again, it should be relatively closely. Some states have a few of these, others have them in every county. So check out the interactive map that I'm showing you uh, at the PTAC website for the whole country to get help with that. Now, I already mentioned it, but once you get registered, next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your capability statement. If you need help with that, I actually do have capability statements that are pre-created and they're totally editable. And I do have those at my website govkidmethod.com. Otherwise, you know, if you've got something on your own or if you're handy with that sort of thing, you can make yours. You can even come to my website and look at mine and, you know, kind of get an idea of, of what I have in mind so that you could, you know, make it on your own. Again, if you're somebody who's, you know, good at graphic design and things like that. Otherwise, if you want to make it simple, I do have those available for you for purchase. And also, you know, after you start marketing or learning how to market, um, if you need help with that or even on the bidding side of things, putting some numbers on the board, you know, how many contracts are you responding to every month? And are you doing them at the right time of the year? Because we are on this seasonal fiscal calendar of, of the government, the federal government. There's four quarters and certain quarters are a lot busier than others. So in terms of, of strategy and what you're going to go after and with who, you know, they don't really teach this stuff. You know, the PTAC doesn't really go into a lot of that. Um, books, I haven't really seen any books on it. So I'm really trying to help. And this is what I have to offer in the space as a differential advantage is, you know, through coaching or through my ultimate government contracting training program, GovCon Gold Rush. That's the type of stuff that we get into. Okay. So for now, I got two videos for you to watch. One of those is going to be a suggestion for you. But then the other one you will see is that next code video in the new SAM system that I promised as well. So make sure you watch one of those videos. And if you're stuck or you're needing help, um, you know, hire me. I'm here to help you and to support you. If you're not ready, you're not able to do that at the very least. That's why I'm making these free YouTube videos. So check out the free YouTube videos and I will see you guys very, very soon. Keep grinding and uh, take care. I'll see you in the next video.